Hi everyone, in this screencast I want to talk about the timeline in Articulate Storyline 2. And as the name suggests, the timeline shows me all of the objects on a slide and how long they're going to be displayed for. Now on this slide I've got three shapes, three, three squares, but if I had other objects on the slide, video files, audio, markers, zoom regions, they all appear in the timeline as an object. Now the default length of a timeline is 5 seconds, but for video and audio files, if they're on a slide, they, the length of them will become the length of the timeline. If I wanted to make the timeline longer or shorter than the default, I can do that by hovering in the timing section of the, of the timeline, and then if I left click I can drag out the timeline and make the timeline longer, or bring it back the other way and make the, the timeline shorter. And pretty much when the timeline ends, that signifies that nothing else was going to happen on the slide. And if the slides were advancing automatically from one to the next, they would advance when the timeline ends. Now a few things about the timeline. Uh, one of them is it's always good practice to, to name all of your objects uh, in the timeline because it helps you to keep track of them, especially when you've got a lot of objects on a slide. So in this case, I've got my three shapes and I've actually named them in accordance to the color that's, that, uh, that they are. And to rename an object, it's easy. You just double click in this section of the timeline and then you type in the name of your object. While you may not rename every single object on a slide, it's certainly a good idea to at least name the objects that you interact with because it makes it a lot easier when you start adding triggers and you have to choose those objects. Uh, so if you if they're all named then you, you know what they are and, and it makes it easier to put your triggers together. Now a few things about the timeline uh, as well. You can when you're working, so these things can help you uh, as part of your development. In this column uh, here I can select these boxes here and that actually locks that particular object in place. So if I've locked this green square I now can't move it but I can still move the other objects that aren't locked. So that could be handy when you're developing and you've got a lot of objects on a slide and you don't want to accidentally move something that you have in a certain spot you can lock it into place. Another thing you can do with the timeline is that you can show or hide objects in the timeline. And again, it can be a handy thing when you're developing that if you have objects that are overlapping one another, that uh, if you want them temporarily removed so you can work on part of the slide and then you can show them again once you're finished. You have to remember that if you have an object hidden when you preview out the slide, uh, it'll be hidden there as well. So you, um, you want to make sure that when you finish developing that you have all the objects visible that you want to be shown. Another thing that uh, is handy when you're working with the timeline and you have a lot of objects on a slide is that it can fill up uh, the standard kind of space that you might have available and you'll have to use this scroll uh, panel, this scroll bar here and move it up and down to, to get to all of the objects on the slide. But there's a handy little feature here where you can undock the timeline and give yourself some more space. You can stretch it out so it becomes quite big and you can see lots of objects at once and if you're working off two monitors you can even move the timeline onto a second screen while you're developing and then when you want to and you're finished and you want to put the timeline back in place you click back on this symbol here and that will redock the timeline in place. One of the other things that the timeline does is that it actually shows which objects are, um, uh, I guess, on top or in a higher position than another. Now, with this slide here, all of the uh, none of the shapes are overlapping one another. But if I was to move them over like this, the object that is on top on the slide is actually the object that is on top in the timeline and it goes down there down the list. Now if I wanted to move one make one of the other the green or the red uh, square be the top object you can actually select it in the timeline here and drag it up or 
drag it down. So you can play around with the positioning of objects in the timeline just by rearranging the, the order in which they appear. Another thing with timelines, and I've created a layer, and layers actually have their own timeline, which can be handy uh, in certain situations. But again, all of the objects on your layers will appear in their own timeline and will work exactly the same where you can move the end of the timeline out or um, shorten it. Uh, and again, every object on your layer will be reflected in the timeline. A handy little trick you can do with the, uh, the timeline in the layer, and I'm going to undock my timeline just to show you this, is that I can see that on this particular layer, I have just the one shape, an orange rectangle. And if for whatever reason, I wanted to maybe hide some of the objects on the base layer when this layer was being displayed, I can actually do that from the timeline of the layer. So underneath my orange object, and again I have the show, hide and, and lock options, but I can also have, uh, I can reveal all of the base layer objects by clicking on this little arrow here. And this will show me my blue, red and green squares that are down on the base. If I use the show, hide icon here, I can actually hide maybe a couple of those shapes on the base layer so that when this layer is showing, the red and the green square in this case will be hidden. So it can be a handy little trick if you want to hide uh, objects on the base layer when a layer is showing. I'm going to come back down to the base and I guess the last thing I just wanted to show you was that another thing that you can use the timeline for is that you can uh, adjust the, the timing of when objects appear and maybe disappear on a slide. So at the moment, all of my three shapes are displayed for the entire length of the timeline. But if I wanted to make them appear progressively on the timeline, I can actually uh, move the start and end points of my objects and have them appear and then disappear off the slide according to what I need to happen. So for instance, if I say I wanted the, the red square to maybe appear at the beginning of the timeline but only stay on the slide for a couple of seconds, I can drag the end position of the, the rectangle towards the left. For my green shape, if I drag it across to the right and also from the left, it will mean that it's the, this shape will come on just before two seconds and disappear at about three and a half seconds. And I can do the same for the blue rectangle. And I could maybe make that show until the end. So by playing around with the start and end positions uh, of objects on the timeline, you can make things, shapes and other content appear progressively or appear and disappear onto the slide. So I'll preview that out just to show you what it looks like. So my red appears, disappears, my green appears, disappears, and my blue sh shape stays until the end of the timeline. So that's it. That's my demonstration on the timeline. Lots of little features and things you can do there uh, and, and uh, handy little tricks that you can use to make things appear onto the slide. And you can do all of that without the, the need for triggers. I'll uh, see you next time.